I'll just say to everybody, I'm super happy to welcome Laurel as a guest <laughs> presenter um, for, for this session of our, our family history group. Um, really excited to, to see what she has to share today. So um, without too much further ado, and you don't have to start right away if you don't want to, Laurel, but I'll, I'll just, uh, you know, turn it to you for whenever Great. you're Great. Well, thank you. I, I will go ahead and begin. I'm My, my watch says four o'clock exactly. Uh, so I will start. And this month, the topic is U.S. GenWeb. Um, the project, which has been around forever. I first got involved in it in 1993. And before long, I got so taken with it, I ended up managing four different counties in Massachusetts. And that's where I sort of, I totally learned how to make web pages just from um, being involved in the project and just you know, totally, I thought I was totally into genealogy, but this took me even more. It was um, incredible. And so let me, you'll have to forgive me if I stumble a little here because I haven't done this before. Um, yes, so US Gen Web was founded in the 1990s and it had the concept of being, um, a ge that genealogy should be for everyone accessible and also free. At the time, Ancestry was being launched. And as we all know, how the cost has you know, started with them and has risen exponentially over the years. And so GenWeb had this idea that uh, they could break down areas of the country in the United States, get volunteers to work with specific areas of interest for them, and create resources online that were freely accessible to everyone who was interested. And so it's entirely a volunteer organization. It um, is completely nonprofit. And there's a leadership, a structured leadership that works by voting. So the membership has created this hierarchy of voting and once a year they vote for president and all of the offices. So it's it's pretty well organized. And um, it's something I really like about it is that it's sort of accessible to, to all. Um, there are administrators, there's a president, there are lots of projects and, you know, there's a vice president, there's a secretary, there's people who are involved just in the voting structure and Beyond that, the structure is the, there's a president and then there are 50 states and every state has its own state coordinator. And that person gets very much involved in the counties because every state has different numbers of counties and each county has its own coordinator. And that person, that county coordinator takes it upon themselves to create content and put it on the web page to make it accessible to all. So I've loved it because, um, you know, I've I've just had some uh, wonderful results myself from it, and um, and I hope you do too. If you're not, are you are you guys all familiar? Raise your hand if you've used it before. No, okay, you have PJ. Yeah, um, Stephanie, have you ever used? Uh, no, okay. Anyway, um, it, it's a great uh, website. They have lots of special projects. They have projects for children. They have, um, they've, they had started ages ago, probably about the same time Find a Grave started a cemetery project. I myself put several complete cemeteries online for my county, including photographs. And um, there's an archives where you can go back and look at older versions of, of the county websites. And there's another project that hasn't been just started since I've been here. It's um, new to me, but I've been trying to learn about it. It's called the African American Grouts Project, which apparently from what I've read has to do with um, the oral tradition in African countries. And I'm not sure how they've connected it specifically with genealogy, except that uh, very often in this country, at least, we probably, those of us who watch Henry Louis Gates um, know that genealogy 
for African Americans who were enslaved and brought here was not was there was nothing but an oral tradition that is all they had until a certain point when they started requiring that they show up on the census so this is a project i'm i'm hoping to find more information about there are lots of different kinds of information there tends to be a lot of information vital records birth marriages and deaths which one would expect and but lots of other things this is what i love about it you just never know what you're going to see on it you get town histories I started putting yearbooks on, um, you know, older school yearbooks, colleges even, and other items like uh, cemetery in inventories. I had a postcard collection on there, which really helped people get to know that whole county, what was in the county. And all, line, all of the online data um, that gets put online, there's some very strict guidelines about it because you do not want to infringe upon anyone's copyright. And so much like Ancestry or Legacy or which, whichever uh, program you might use online to build your family tree, you'll prob you've probably noticed by now that if you put in somebody living in your Ancestry folder, that will never show up. Uh, to anyone else, if that person, if you do not have a deceased date, and if it's over a hundred years, um, those people just, you know, it's sort of a loose end. And so copyright free is really important. Um, for me, back when I first started, it was, there was a 75 year rule. So it ended up being around 1924, 25, you could count on it being copyright free. However, those laws were changed maybe within the you know past 10 years, probably. And now you it's even, you know, I really do a lot of searching to find out if something is copyright free before I put it on. And also, you know, I mean, you want to protect the writer, you know, or, or the the legacy of whoever owns that material now. And you want to be able to control privacy for people who want to keep that kind of thing private. So anyway, that's a really important feature of US Gen Web is that all the material on there has to be copyright free. Um, and what the other part that I like about US Gen Web is that Every county is different because every county has at least one, maybe two county coordinators. And the reason that sometimes there's multiples is if you have a county like Boston, which is Suffolk County, it's huge. There's just no way that one person could, you know, work to to put that kind of material, that quantity of material online. So you know, sometimes there's there's two or even three county coordinators for the larger cities, but people work together and put material on. And because it's individuals, like we're all different people, we have all, a whole, all of us have different sense of aesthetics and taste. They, um, you know, they all look different. And that's a really what I love about it because it just makes it more interesting to me. Uh, and so no two counties are alike in content and nor design. You just never know what you're going to get. So sometimes you'll come across in a magnificent county. I can tell you Dutchess County is a really amazing county. I, I actually used to know the woman who at the time she was also state coordinator. Her name was Holly Tim. And that's all she used to do. I used to online constantly putting new material on. So she was amazing. And we're going to look at the Yates County uh, website pretty soon, and you'll you'll see that that is an amazing resource too. I um, now I don't know if somebody can tell me how to pronounce her name, but Fran Dumas is that the correct way of pronouncing it, or is it Dumas, our our county historian? I've always heard Dumas. Dumas, yeah, okay. or Dumas, Dumas. Oh yeah, well I've the also woman. Heard had said that too, right? So 
So she has done what I consider to be an exemplary job, and we'll, we're going to soon explore that. So in finding Yates County, the New York State uh, US Gen website, I've put a link on the screen and there is going to be a handout. So you'll be, you don't have to worry about writing these, but because you can, you can get the handout. And the first thing you see on the screen is this large map. The map has all the counties and it's clickable. So you can find Yates County if you wish. I, I spent a fair amount of time looking at it because it's such a small county that I, you know, and tucked in. And but I did finally found it. But if you're not interested in, you know, spending the time looking for any particular county, if you scroll down, there's a huge sort of spreadsheet type grid that gives you every single county in New York State, of which there are 62 counties. I knew there were a lot, but I didn't realize it was 62. And there are links to each one of them. It, it also tells you who the county coordinators are. It tells you when the counties are were founded. And um, it's a really easy way to get around. So you might be, you know, if you have family here, you might be interested in looking immediately at Yates County. However, the great part about US Gen Web is you can go select another state. And if you have family, if you're, you know, like me, I'm from Massachusetts, I, I do not have, you know, family here, but I could go to any state I do have family in and look for them, including people I've lost contact with, but I know they used to live in California and, you know, want to try to track them down in that respect. So I really think it's a great format. I really love it. And it's easy. Um, so Fran created the Yates County U.S. Gen site, and it's phenomenal. It has such resources on it like I've never seen. I mean, she's got much more information on her site than I have on the sites I've done. Well, I don't know if it's more in quantity, but hers is more pertinent to what people look for. She has a lot of births marriages and deaths. She has indexes. Um, I've got a list on the current screen that's there. Um, she has divided her splash page, as we call it, for containing a bunch of sub uh, categories. And the first one is she's got Yates County municipalities and their records. And it, I'm amazed at it because she's got um, you know, literally has all the records of a lot of town of meetings that were held by the people who ran the, uh, you know, cities and towns at that time. She's got census resources. She's got census indexes. So you can go to an index and look up your ancestor's name. And if you find that name, you can actually, you'll know exactly which census record you need to go look at to find it. It's very, very helpful. The vital records, as I said, birth, marriages, and deaths, and information about the Yates County Historical Society, which I'm sure she's really been involved in over the years. I know I first met her, I've only met her one time, and it was a day where I happened to be getting the mail and I saw I saw a group of people wandering around my house and I'm like, what's going on here? And it turned out to be Fran and a group of uh, her, I guess her assistants. And what they were doing is putting together a book of images of historic Main Street, Clinton Street and the like in the historic district in general. And they were doing photographs. So I, I couldn't believe it that she had this entourage, but it was great. And she has put some incredible websites on there. She's got, I don't know if you people are, um, have ever heard of or been to a website that's called Penyan and how it got that way. Yes. And it's a great website because yes. 
I, it's amazing. You know, it's a, it's almost like there's this map and you can go up and down the streets. Mm -hmm. And I was able to go to our house since we're right here on Main Street and find out the history of it, who who lived next door when it was founded and when the house was built in the, around 1860. And, you know, what the people on the other side did for a living, you know, okay. so it's, um, it's a great website to go to if you're, you know, I don't know if, um, you know, Stephanie is in a historic district too, I think. I don't know if her house is on it, but I wouldn't be surprised. No, we're, we're not. You're not? Okay. No, East Main Street is not a part of the historic district. Oh, well, I'm so surprised because there's gorgeous houses there. We gorgeous and historic, uh don't always overlap yeah you know unfortunately <laughs> well at any rate um and then the last category on the way she's got her material subdivided is church records so for example she has got apparently the com the complete archives of the congregational church uh on her website that you can search and go into so it's it's pretty it's pretty comprehensive and amazing, and you know she has thanked certain people and made notes of um, appreciation for their assistance. But it's um, it's much to be applauded. We should be as a county really proud of that. And there's more. There's military records. She's got Civil and World War One records that you can access and indexes that you can help find the people you're looking for. She's got uh, vital records from the Penyan Democrat, which I think I haven't explored yet because I just saw it the other day, but I'm really excited to look at it. So you can go in. She has indexed the Penyan Democrat of important events like births, marriages, I'm assuming, deaths, and um, so there more than likely are some obituaries there. As I said, I haven't looked at it, but it's um, it's a great project and she's done a wonderful job with it. The other, I guess maybe this is my favorite resource that she has online because I'm very partial to cemeteries. She has got what she calls this a cemetery project and it involves burials in not just here in Penyan, but all over Yates County. She's got um, quite a few municipalities and their cemeteries, which have been inventoried. And she's got the burial places for all of these people when they were buried. And that includes Lakeview Cemetery, which is huge. And the part I liked about Lake, the, actually, I was really amazed with the Lakeview Cemetery. She has got maps online with every grave that's and has a number for that grave a plot number so if you are or have family that happen to be buried there if you're doing a source if you if you're looking to um you know to to have a very specific source written up for your um for your family tree you can actually go in and find the plot number and all and it's it's really it's really quite amazing Now, yes, I'm going, I'm doing a little bit of repetition here, but she does have examples of um, things like the military rep records, the 1863 Civil War draft roll for all nine, nine towns. So it is the 19, so is the 1917 World War I militia roll. And that's, that's really amazing. Discharge papers recorded with the county clerk have been filed by veterans since the 1860s. The county historian has some pension rolls as well from the Revolution and the War of 1812. I mean, the idea that all of this is put together and easily accessible to me is uh, phenomenal and interesting. She has indices to deeds of houses and um, there is a lot of information. If you haven't done any research on the deed to your house, or if you don't have much information about the history of the house, and if it's been in your family for a long time, 
or you know the house they lived in 100 years ago, you may want to do a deed research because there's information on that deed that can you know, potentially help you out with your family research. Um, and as I mentioned before, the record book of the free congregational church. Oh, and wills, that's another thing. I mean, it's really amazing. If you haven't looked at this website before, you, you really, it's a must see. Um, other projects, she has the cemeteries and vital records also from the Yates County Chronicle which I guess must have developed into the Chronicle Express. So she's got those records from 1867 to 1865. And this is the part that I found incredible is that she apparently has access to the original papers and may, maybe perhaps her files are in fact copies of the original notices and you may write to her and get an original copy for a dollar. Like what kind of bargain is that? I mean, I think that's incredible. I mean, I spend hours looking for obituaries all the time and you know, it's not always that great and, or nor certainly not that easy, but there are so many resources. I can't even begin to mention them all, but um, so, you know, please do visit this website. And if you if you end up using it and finding things and see Fran, make sure you thank her because it's uh, this is an amazing piece of work, I think. Now, I like to think of US Gen Web as let's leave no stone unturned. That's been my sort of attitude about genealogy. I go off on tangents and end up spending time on things that um, may not pay off at the beginning, but later on I end up having these, what I call eureka moments where all of a sudden I've gotten this connection or I've learned something new. And there's valuable information, not, and I'm not talking about just Yates County, but also you know, the overall US Gen Web counties. You can go there and search and lots of times you find things I've connected up with relatives I've never known. And um, I have a couple examples I just want to mention just in terms of these Eureka moments. So that I, as a county coordinator myself, was able to provide for others, but things that I've had happen to me. So in the county I ran in Massachusetts, which was Hamden County, it had this little town called Granville, Massachusetts. It was founded in the 1700s, and it's a, still a very relatively small town. Well, I started putting material on about Granville that I could put on, and I started getting these messages from people, not overwhelming amount, but enough to make me, hmm, I noticed this, you know, and I had people asking me, where the cemeteries were, where, what happened to my great great grandfather who was there, he was born there, he was married there, he lived there with his family, he was on early census, and then he was gone. Never, I don't know what happened. And I had probably about six letters, emails from people about this. And I thought at the time, um, this was, I found it to be very weird. And meaningful. Well, at the time I had, um, in my collection of old books, I had a 1899 edition of a journal, a bound journal for 1899 called New England um, Journal. That's all it was called. And it was all about the New England States little articles. Well, I found this article in that volume about Granville, the same town. And what had happened is, according to the article, there was uh, an issue in terms of farmland. It's a very sort of wooded area. And with the approval of one of the ministers of the church, the big church, and discussion among all of the residents, 
probably about one third of the town picked up and moved at the same time. And they went west. They went in the westward expansion. And it ended up they went to Ohio. And guess what they named the town? Granville. <laughs> so there's a Granville, Ohio. And um, I started investigating that. And I wrote to all the people that wrote to me and said, look at death records in Granville, Ohio. And I heard back from only three of them, but they all found the death records. And I was, you know, really happy because I felt like if I hadn't, you know, been working on this stuff that, um, you know, who knows if and when they'd ever have found this death record. So there are lots of moments like that with U.S. Gen when you, Web. You find, you end up, you know, on Ancestry, you find the big records, you find the big databases. And, you know, if you're lucky, you find stuff you need. But these little bits and pieces are, you know, almost on shoulders of the people that work with a smaller area to be able to find and, and get the word out about. Um, the other thing I have, oops, I just ch changed it by mistake. The other thing that I love doing is um, looking for other oddball materials. And I'm, I'm sure that everyone here has seen cookbooks that are published by churches or organizations or, um, or the like, family, family cookbooks. And um, so I found one from 1889 that had an ancestor of mine who had placed a recipe in it. And I got a, such a huge kick out of it because every single recipe had the contributor's name on it. And I loved it because it was fun to see how people ate in 1889. And I mean, I still don't know how they cook, you know, when they say a pinch of or a handful of sugar, or, you know, how did, how did that work, you know? And um, even more so, there was a chapter that was, that were, hell, the whole chapter was contributions from local doctors about medical advice and, you know, different things that you could brew up in your house too. You had a cold, you could, you know, mix these things together and take it for the cold. And I'm telling you, it's like, I'm really glad I don't live back then because I would not have wanted to be consuming some of this stuff. Um, I wanted to mention city directories because one of the things I learned in working with US GenWeb is that I was working with Berkshire County. And thank goodness for the librarian that was there. I, I, I thank her for this. I learned that the city directories in every year that had been published by Pitts, Pittsfield, Massachusetts, which was the county seat, every single year these directories, um, they they had two little notations in them that are not, that don't appear in every city directory, but they do appear in some and are definitely worth looking for. And one was a notation, the person's name and the notation R-E-M with a place name, which simply meant that, the, that they removed, they moved somewhere else into where the place was, which is extremely help, helpful if you're trying to trace a, a relative. Um, the other thing if, that these directories had were, and this turned out to be massive, were death dates. So they had the people that were mo that moved and then they had all the people that died. And so I worked with um, an assistant, we worked together and transcribed what turned out to be thousands of death dates and we put it together in a database and got that onto Berkshire County. But um, I'm only mentioning that because it's sort of a eureka moment that we found it, but also it's something to keep your eye open for you if you do use city directories to check to see if they have that. I have photographs um, listed on there because um, the one I was in a lot of schools, I'm a military brat. And my first year in school, I was in kindergarten and I happened to be in a school in Holyoke, my hometown. 
And I, the one piece of memorabilia I have of it that my mother kept was a five by seven photograph of the class. And classes were huge then. I mean, the whole kindergarten class was there. And I didn't know who anyone was in that picture except for me. And so I scanned the photo and I put it online and I said, told the year I thought, you know, that I knew it was and said, anybody, can anyone help identify who this is, who the people are? Let's, let's see if we can name them. And um, don't you know, a few months later, I got this email from a woman named Ellen who said, you know, I've got that picture too. Only my mother wrote every single name down. And so she sent me a list of names and I had all the names of the whole class. And it was then I noticed that Ellen had a last name that was connected to my family. And I wrote to her and said, are you related to, and I named the person and it turned, long story short, she was my cousin. We never met each other. We never knew each other existed, but um, I, I only put that on there because I find that sometimes if you do put something like that online, you end up getting responses that are, you know, interesting and, and do yield some kind of, um, you know, connection for you. So I'm, I'm a proponent of putting on photographs. The odd part is, is so Ellen and I became pretty good friends over the years. And a few years after that, um, and I've always been jealous of all my cousins. I have all these cousins who grew up in one city and I was always jealous about, oh, I wish I'd grown up in one city and not moved around to all these places. I don't wanna, I wish I'd been in one school system. And so Ellen had heard me say this lament before. So she ended up organizing a kindergarten reunion party for me. And we all showed up and uh, I met all of these adults that I barely remembered as children. And, um, but anyway, it was a nice event and um, a very meaningful event for me. And I'm you know, just saying that if you do have that kind of material that sometimes putting it out there can yield something really great for you. Now, one of the things that um, I love about uh, US Gen Web is message boards. It used to be, they used to be message boards that were provided by a different company that Ancestry actually bought, which was Roots Web. And um, they sort of disappeared after that, but they were attached to the US Gen websites and some people still have links to them. And it's a good thing because ultimately what happened is when Ancestry start, acquired all of these boards, they either negotiated or they made a commitment to keep the keep these message boards free, totally free. So even if you don't have an Ancestry account, you can go and look up messages. And this is people from all over the world that write in and they're usually seeking something. They're seeking, you know, uh, a relative, uh, somebody who's, you know, a name and place, you can, uh, they have surname boards. So you might find a surname from, you know, Western Massachusetts or from Yates County. I've seen surnames here in Yates County that are, um, you know, I, I just say it from Massachusetts, oh, they migrated west, you know, Mer Merit is one of the names, you know, and I, um, I recently met a guy whose last name is Merit, and he's doing his research. And I said, and he said, well, my name's Merit. And I go, well, I look, I know lots of Merits, because this is, you know, probably they came from the east. And um, so if you have, you know, if you wish to seek out information and again just reach out you can write you could write a message saying you know the general area you're from you don't have to give a lot of detail but you can give the name and say seeking information about merits from 
Yates County area or from whatever name you have, Yates County area or wherever you're from. And um, and I have had some really good luck with that. I've had you know people that I've connected up with that I you know been able to put together with my family history and add some names and dates to, and in some cases befriend them. You know we still do exchanges of photographs and that sort of thing. There's also keywords. There's a message board that allows you to put a keyword from any place or anywhere or anything on there. So you could write about, you know, looking for somebody who worked at the such and such a factory. And uh, that can that can help you quite a bit. And you can get some really positive uh, responses on that. Now, what I was hoping to do, why I talked fast, didn't I? Yes, I said, thank you for attending. Um, so I would I would recommend any of um, the things I've just mentioned, but most of all, for Yates County, I'd be really proud of it because of um, Fran has done some magnificent work. And I think if you if I had family, if I came from Yates County, I'd be thrilled because to be able to look and see what she has online is really amazing. PJ, did you find things online? You said you had been there before. It was ages ago, probably back in the 1990s. Yeah. And yeah. I connected with a few people and learned a little bit, but it was just the beginning of it. So um, I know I used the message boards, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, I think that was about it. Yeah. You may want to check yeah. back just from what I see oh, her doing. Yeah. Is, um, oh, yeah. You know, I wish um, that existed for my region. Laura, I have yeah, a question. Uh, um, how far back does the information go? Or is it depending upon the county and the coordinator and stuff? Yeah, and I think it it, it does. Well, I think in the case of Fran, it, um, you know, it just it depends on what she could get her hands on okay. to transcribe. And I feel like I don't know this for certain because she and I have never sat down and chatted. But um, my sense is, and having seen her out in front of my house that day with a group of photographers taking pictures for her, my sense is that she had quite a, a few volunteers helping to do transcriptions. So, you know, the problem, I think, is, first of all, Old records, I think very old records can definitely exist on the sites, but it depends on whether they still exist. When I was putting my Hamden County website together, I called up the town clerks of every single town and in some cases went in to see them. And I was shocked, but not totally surprised that many of those towns have had fires and have lost records, just like, you know, you hear about that for mm -hmm. Ireland and for places in Europe. And so I think that my gut feeling is that if those records exist, and if Fran had access to them, that those, those things would be probably by now transcribed and online. Now, I could be wrong. But um, she talks about a woman that I don't know if any of you know, Bonnie Bunce, and thanks her for all the transcriptions that she has done. But uh, it would, um, if you go to the website, she's very good at giving the dates of the material that she has online, and it would at least give you a date range to to investigate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. But it's it's great stuff. I am just, I'm so impressed. I have, I have no idea this existed. I, it's too bad that I'm busy tonight because I would start right now. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> Stephanie, I thought of you right away when I saw how many deaths and burials. They are. You I thought, thought of me when you looked at well, I, thought of, I, I thought of you looking for your grandmother, was it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so. I, uh, yes. So I don't know. I'll be interested to see if you find anything. But I just I found, like I said, it's just, you know, to see these maps that she has 
of Lakeview Cemetery. It's just, yeah. you know, it's one of those big garden cemeteries that started around the time that there's one in my hometown too. And, uh, and it's just, there's thousands and thousands of people in it. Uh, you know, I, one in, there's one in Albion, New York, that is a beautiful cemetery with trees and bushes <laughs> and just very, very nice. Yep. And it goes back to before the Civil War. Yeah, yeah, some of those do. So you see those old brownstone gravestones and everything. Yeah, beautiful. But, you the know, I, go ahead. The, the History Center um, is going, to, we're hoping to produce an audio tour of Main Street, maybe oh. three of them, because the the Saturday morning ones really don't work out we can only do them in the summer yes and half the time it rains yeah and the other times it's too hot and you know there's also limited volunteers who, who will do it so yeah. we're going to try this audio tour thing oh that's and good i am writing up small blurbs uh for the various houses or the various buildings or areas that we're going to highlight and I went to Penyan and how, how it got that way um, or whatever. What, is that her website? Yes. Yes. Uh, and it, of course, it's also built on uh, one of her books. It, she's just marvelous. She's just got so much stuff in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because yeah. we have to be careful with the audio tour that we can't um, constant. We can't see anything about what the building is now, mm -hmm. because if it's an audio tour, it's too hard to change. Right. I mean, if we had stood in front of the arcade building at the beginning of the year and said, oh, but now this is a Sabrina's Bake Shop. Well, it's not there anymore. So oh, we can only talk about what it has been. Oh, so that's, boy, yeah. that's where Fran is just number one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's she's great. And I mean, she really knows, you know, how how to do it in the correct manner. I used to love it when the History Center uh one of the Copsons came over to me when they were living here and it was uh, Roy, right? And uh, Ray. Ray. Yeah. And, and so he said to me, I have a proposal for you. Do you mind? I give this walking tour. Yeah. And do you mind if, you know, we walked by your house around, oh, 10 o'clock? Yes. Yeah. And, you know, and you could come out and say a few words. And um, and I said, sure, because I had done a lot of research on my house before, you know, when we moved in, I was, you know, because it was owned by a guy named George, George Latham, who actually ended up um, being potentially um, running for comptroller, I think, for New York State. Yeah. And um, had some interesting things happen to him. But um at any rate, I said, sure, come by. So he did. He came by with the first group and there was yeah. you know, only a handful. And, um, you know, and I talked a little bit about when the house was built and, you know, the style and so on. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, would you guys like to come in the front door mm -hmm. and you'll see the stairs, uh -huh. and the parlors, and, I'm, uh -huh. and we'll let you peek in at the dining room because uh -huh. I knew breakfast would be over by then. Um, because for those, you know, who don't know, we had, a, we were a and b at the time. And, um, you know, I, I said, I'm not going to give you a tour of the whole house, but you can see what some of the rooms are like. And they loved it. They oh, loved it. it was the highlight of the tours that I did. Because I, I right. you Europe were one of the tour guides. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I loved it because, you know, I would... Um, you know, be able to show show off the beauty and the workmanship yeah. of the house. I yeah. mean, that's the amazing thing is the workmanship, you know, yeah. and uh, quiz them to see if if they knew what certain products were being used in the in the house. But and they were all really nice and respectful, yeah. and it was it was fine. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad you're doing that with the walking tour. Yes. So are we. I think that's going to be great. And are those going to be recordings that get rented um we're not quite sure how we're going to do it i don't think so i think it's going to be something to do with smartphones oh nice so that there will be a uh, qr code mm -hmm. and then um they'll get a, a picture of the building or buildings 
um, and then a blurb um, about it. Yep. But yeah. I'm meeting, I'm actually meeting tomorrow with um, Aaron Mumby, who is the uh -huh. a librarian at the, uh, uh, the Penyon Academy. He's uh -huh. got a tech group who could produce this for us. Oh, that would be fantastic. Yes. So uh -huh. keep your fingers crossed. Well, that's great. I know we purchased, I think it was, I don't remember if it was a CD or a DVD, but it was a driving tour of yes. this county and yeah. enjoyed that. But anyway, so I didn't mean to go to the aside with this, but I'm really glad you mentioned the um, the tours. So anyhow, um, I've said pretty much what I want to say. If you go back to the original site that I had um, mentioned, where did it go? Yes. Um, U.S. Gen Web to New York. In the upper right corner, there's also the ability to pick any other state. And um, it's very easy to do. And if you know the county for, the, you know, had anything to do with the people that you're seeking out, um, it, it will possibly help you, at least. At least it, would, it gives you a clue. And sometimes all you really need are clues as far as you know, my own, this is my own experience. Um, wow. Yeah, it's interesting. And um, what else? I had one more thing I wanted to say, and it's already, it's escaped my mind already because of uh, this. Well, I know. Does anyone have any questions? Well, how's your research after, going? <laughs> after we spend time looking at it we'll probably come up with some questions yeah would you come back <laughs> well I, I think i'm on schedule to come back actually in a class, but um for something else but it, you know I, i'm happy my email is at the end of um the document that you should be getting and if you want to email me, I'm happy to answer questions too. That's that's something else. I'm so happy I'm retired now because my major project is genealogy now. <laughs> well, and selling this house, but you know, that's another matter. Good deal. Well, anyway, um, how's how is your genealogy doing otherwise? Making any advantage uh, advances? I don't I don't think I've done anything. Nothing. Nope. I've Not been going. Lately. I've been going back a little bit and and actually finding um, the towns and counties where relatives you know lived because mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm trying to talk my husband into road trips. <laughs> ah, that's great. That's so. great. I I have a question, Alex. See there? Yeah, you yes. there? I'm here. Alex, um, you have a program tonight at the library, right? I do. And it's on? It's the uh, the Lori uh, Gifford Anderson book. Yep. Yes. I have something to say about genealogy. Lori is my cousin. Oh. <laughs> and I did not know that. She is a DNA match. And so is her son on Ancestry. Wow. See, now you got to go to the program. <laughs> <laughs> I've already been to one of her programs and we were colleagues. I know her very well. I am so proud of her being my, my relative. <laughs> Yet That's another wonderful. notch for your family tree. <laughs> yes. Oh, definitely. She gets her, she gets her own branch. Not only that is, but she's so good at raising kitties and dogs so <laughs> and kids <laughs> well that's always good too <laughs> is she is she local stephanie is she local? yes oh. yeah she's um she she right now she lives out near canandaigua stanley gorham around in there but she's originally from Prattsburg, i think oh. and her she was a gifford but her mother was a mortensen uh, M O R T E E N S E N. So I'm sure that's where the uh, um, connection is. That it's you know it's someplace in northern Jutland in Denmark. So, but I haven't figured it out. We've both looked. Her son has done a family tree. I've looked at his. He's probably looked at mine. You know, we might not ever find it, but who cares? 
Well, the DNA speaks loudly, you know. It does. So you've got that. That's awesome. Yep. Good. So at any rate, um, I guess I guess I were like ten minutes before it, you know, the scheduled ending. I guess, but I I uh, I guess I should have planned for longer. <laughs> But um, I just wasn't sure. Thank you so it much. Yeah. It was fascinating. Yes. Fantastic, Laurel. Thank you so very uh, much. Well, you're yeah. welcome. Yes. Thank you. And I can, you know, I've been attending Zoom meetings, but I've never been involved in the presentation of one. And um, and I I've been really excited and have learned a lot just from attending zoom meetings and i know alex is really um really great about choosing topics and um and i've been going to other ones so it's you know i'm i'm just making up for the 10 years i ran a b and b now and couldn't do this so it's um enjoy really so thank you again and it was fun and um i always i always love when i see any of you just because we all talk genealogy. <laughs> and I'm still going to come over and meet you for lunch one day, Janice. Okay, that works. That works. All right. We'll have to make a plan. Yep. Bye bye now. All right. Bye. Have everybody. a good evening. Bye. Have a good night. Thanks again, Laurel. Sure, you're welcome. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>